track, and then we're going to swish right into the Electromatics and John Liebman, so that you will know what's happening for the 25 minutes beyond that. Please enjoy. Uh, yes, I played it last week at the tail end of the show, but you early people missed it. And it's a great, funny conversation, but it tells you a lot about the band over 25 years and about John and particularly what I don't want to do with him in the Olympics. And this stuff, trust me, is important. Hi, this is Dana Gillespie from London, England. To tell you about the second best way to wake up. Just tune in to UK Bob and his Good Morning Blues show and feel good for four hours on WRFG Atlanta. It should legally be a blues requirement, but for those of you that have not been exposed to the electromatics, live or otherwise, feast your ears on some clips before the mighty John Liebman joins us. The headline act for September the 2nd, too good to miss. I found a hole so big that it swallowed my whole life. And if I didn't live, I swear that I would die. Cause I'm of the useless kind, and I know that I can't. Marcus Malone on the other side of the Atlantic in jolly London, England. You're listening to my top mate, UK Bob, playing the best of British blues on WRFG Atlanta. What a way to start the day. Oh, yeah. I 
I would say that out of that, you know, originality in roots is very important to me. It's important to the guys I play with now. And, and we're not necessarily trying to emulate what's been done, but trying to stamp it ourselves. So, yeah, I would agree with you. Roots music. That's, Soul music. That's the one with the, the black and white cover, and you were all lined up against the wall, right? That, that's exactly right. With uh, okay. Aaron Trubick was in that band, Nick Johnson, Mark Rodabaugh. David Savage. Um, unfortunately, the the band, as it were, kind of dissolved because Mark moved to Nashville. Aaron Trubick moved to Spain. David Savage moved to Michigan. Nick Johnson's doing other projects in Atlanta. So there's, you know, it was kind of a, an era, and then it was the end of an era. And now um, the two guys that filter through the guitar seat on most given nights is Cody Matlock, or Dave Yoke, Dave, uh, former guitar player for Dr. John and Susan Tedeschi, uh, pre Tedeschi Trucks. And obviously we know Cody. Um, and then Matt Walkup's been, my old friend Matt Walkup's been doing the piano seat. We've been friends. Yeah, for, yeah, but you know, the trouble with Matt is yeah. if he gets a hangnail or something, he's a no show, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I just I can't wait to see his face when he hears that. It's going to be fantastic. Oh, come on. We all um, know that getting one of those sprouting hairs on the end of your nose can be super painful. They can be. It can be. But Matt and I actually go back. <laughs> um, I, Matt and I met each other even before I met Sean Costello and before Matt was ever playing in that band. Um, we had contacts through – the lo- like just living locally here in Atlanta, we had people in common. And so Matt and I met uh, before we were ever playing music together, but it's been, you know, I want to say it's been 25, 26, 27 years. We've been playing music together off and on. Yeah, um, but and you, then we, rounding, we both yeah. know his brothers better. You know. Neil, Neil is a, Neil is a monster, <laughs> but Neil, but Neil now has his own, uh, Neil's got his own thing going on as well. So yeah. You can't Adidas afford thing. Neil anymore. I can't. I can't. I can't get him in from Peachtree City. It's like, uh, you know, I have to get him a, a, a visa to get to Blind Willies. Oh, you want so. him to come inside the perimeter? What were you thinking? Well, the problem is the golf carts in Peachtree City don't make it all the way. So he, he's got to put gas in the car. Well, you, you, you covered one of the things that I was going to go through. You've, you've done that, which was the rotating list of players. We talked about the Savage Pianist and Aaron. Uh, who's been gone a while? He didn't start in Spain. He started in Russia or some obscure or Bulgaria or something like that. But yeah, he's he's been around and about. I mean, they he he travels quite a bit. They they did head directly to Spain, um, and his wife and his son Jack. Um, they they basically live um, in uh, Marbella, I believe it is, and um, really beautiful area. And then Aaron travels quite a bit. He's uh, yeah. he's always been a bit of a of a uh, nomad is the best way I could describe Aaron. No, he um, is. But the fact that you can be based in Spain, trust me, is better than anything you and I can come up with here. <laughs> I'm excited. I can't wait. I actually had a, a person at our gig at Blind Willie's last weekend. Um, a girl comes up to the stage and she said, you know, do you guys do destination weddings? And I said, well... I guess it just depends is the destination Panama City or, or somewhere else because that'd probably be a no. And then uh, she said, "Well, I actually am going to be getting married in Marbella." And I said, "Well, it just so happens my old bass player lives there, <laughs> and he's got a couch." And, she, and then Cody Matlock heard and he goes, "I want to go." <laughs> <laughs> of course he did. Well, all you got to do to really get it right is head north to Barcelona and don't come back. The best place yeah. in Europe. I believe it. I believe so, it. I'm still. I'm still have not. Who did been there. we miss? Who did we miss? Uh, I'm trying to think. Randy Chapman was part of it at some point, wasn't he? Randy. Yes. Yeah, so there was an era um, where. So the first incarnation of the group actually was it was Mark D'Alessio, uh, Matt Sickles, who used to play with Felix and the Cats, and then I think one of the first drummers in the band was Jason Reichert who is J.J. Oh. Boogie, you know, who plays with yeah, yeah. Uh, Arrested Development. Yeah. That that band was backing up Stony uh, Stony Brooks, who had a regular weekend at the Northside every month. And I, at some point, Stony had called me and said, look, I'm, uh, 
I'm not going to be uh, playing every week, you know, these full weekends because he was going back to school. This is my this is my rickety memory remembering. Uh, but he was going to be going back to school, and you know, I talked with Ellen Webb, and we started taking over slots at the north side, and I had already been coming. Uh, up to the north side through co- my college years in the mid '90s, and playing with Johnny Knox and and Maurice Mazzaro from the Casanovas and uh, Ira Malkin and all the you know all the guys everything really in that that era Mudcat all of that originated out of the north side you know from that early '90s mid '90s uh, period and so um, and so that was the first incarnation and then. I I hooked up with Randy Chapman and with Chris Dale, who um, he's out on the road uh, doing a big country touring act. And um, Lee Goodness was in the band for 15 years playing drums. Oh, yeah, I forgot about him. Yeah, yeah, Curtis Mayfield's old guy. And and, uh, Larry Griffith was in the band. I mean, it's always, you know, Bob, we always laugh because we always say, without me, who were the electromatics? And then there was one night where everybody had we you know, moved out of the band and we took the press shot, crossed everybody's picture out, and the S and wrote the electromatic. <laughs> well, that's but, what happened. You know, yeah. It's it's twenty five years. You know, everybody does different things. You go in different directions, and you know, Chappie Chappie was great. Bill Burke was in the band for some time. Bob Page. Uh, you know, who passed away. Bill Burke's been, uh, unfortunately, um, you know, in prison for God knows how long now. And it's just, you know, music, I don't know if it's just, if it's because we know so many people or we contact so many people, but, you know, so many things have happened to all these people I've known over the course of 25 years that you sometimes wonder if, is it, are we cursed or is it musicians that are cursed or are we just, we know so many people that this is just normal life. You well, know what I you'd mean? Be su- you'd be surprised. You see that vein, right? Through any band that's 20 years plus, there is you, the yeah. umbilical cord, okay, which is right. feeding you know, the blood to anybody that wants to step in and out of the womb. And that's a, a probably right. a bizarre way of explaining it, but that's what I see. And, I've, and even with you know, the big names, the big name bands are always the same. Uh, uh, you have John Mayles Blues Breakers, uh, Kim Simmons, right. Savoy Brown. <clears throat> Look at the the phenomenal list of people that came and went, but there'd always be the umbilical cord. So I, I guess that's kind of an ugly way of saying that's your job. Put your hat on, uh, keep your yeah. beard on, and uh, let's play some music. Uh, anyone that's just dropped into this uh, fun conversation, we're talking about the headline act for the 39th annual Labor Day Blues Barbecue on Labor Day, which is September the 2nd this year, talking to John Liebman, who is the heart, soul, the voice, the beard, the hat, and all the other things that are right up front (laughs) there uh, of everything that's transpired. And now you're going to get to listen to what they really sound like. Ah! Good morning, everybody. This is uh, Roger Cotton from the Peter Green Splinter Group. Here we are in the Kent Delta recording the new Barcodes Blues album with some wonderful players on it and uh, hope you're going to enjoy it when old Bob gets his hands on it. He said, Bob is tall, good-looking and incredibly available. So um, there you are. Okay, so listening. Good morning, Blues. UK Bob, WRFG. 89.3 89.3 FM. Take it easy. Or as BB King once said to me, who are you?
waited so long I thought by now I'd be done John Cleary from New Orleans, Louisiana, and you're listening to UK Bob, the Good Morning Blues. So what I've noticed is that you yourself are playing more often just the last 18 months or so. Is there a reason for that? You know, it's interesting. Um... I I don't proactively go find gigs. I, I actually work a fairly lucrative and difficult day job that I, I took on, um, gosh, now it's almost been 10 years. And uh, it's, my, it's my, my Clark Kent to my Superman in Blind Willies, right? So well, I, we, we, I have we all my, had one. You know, we all had one. I yeah. think I shared my resume with you about 10 years ago when you, I got bored. You did. With you did. Yeah. I recall yeah, that. I recall that. But catch um, me on an airplane yeah. with a suit and a purple briefcase buzzing around the planet. Yeah. So now, who's that? That's no, too, no, it can't that's be the same guy. Funny. The um, you know, and I, I don't, I don't proactively go out and look. Um, what I am, you know, what I, I think from the years and years and years of playing, and I, I have a regular, um, you know, typically a regular Saturday at Blind Willie's every month. We bring folks out and. Uh, the festival stuff has started to pick up. The RFG festival, tunes by the tracks, uh, via some some folks in the music scene. We're going to be doing um, a, uh, a festival uh, for. It's called Extravaganza. It's in October. It's the Big Green Egg people, and we're actually going to be playing out in the center field at Cool Ray Field, where the Stripers play. And uh, you know, it just stuff just comes. It just it pops up. And if it's going to be fun and if we're going to enjoy it and have a great time doing it, then I'm all about it. But gone are the days where I'm doing gigs that I absolutely loathe <laughs> for, well, here, for the, the sheer key sake to of money. Of, the key to all of that is if you're still having fun and enjoying it and take out the pieces you don't like. I've got a lot of friends that are major acts that have come off, not off the road, but they're not traveling anymore. Um, sure. Even people up, way up north, a fantastic soul band. I loved them when they would come down here. He said, I'm done with, with the long tours. You know, uh, Chubby Carrier, the only uh, Zydeco nominee for a Grammy, um, he's not coming out of New Orleans anymore. And lots of people, and I don't necessarily look at it as an age thing. I think they decide, you know what, I can just enjoy life just this way without adding the harshness in there. So that's the thing you've got to not be tempted to, to leave behind. I've got to tell you something funny that just crossed my mind. When you and I had a quick exchange last week to plan this conversation, I think sometime within the hour or two, I sat down comfortably and was just staring at the Olympics on my phone. And uh, that night I had... A dream that I'll deny tomorrow telling you about is that <laughs> you and I were somehow involved um, in the synchronized swimming 
the bit where they only see the legs above the water, and I wanted to be able to reach out and tell you, you really are not very appealing upside down underwater, and you need to know that. <laughs> just I thought you were going to tell me we we had we we had a we committed a bank heist, or you know we were running around in in, no, a, in a very British. Done. That's okay. been done. British automobile, fast automobile, a Mini Cooper, maybe. <laughs> That's been done twice, actually. Yeah, but uh, no, right. I just, it is. I, I'm, I'm, I'm very good. I'm very rich with dreams, which I love because it means I didn't waste that time. I filled it with a funniest conversation interview with Eric Burden. We were talking about his new album of the time. I don't remember what it was, and he said, "I have the toughest time with my band," and I go, "Why?" He says, well, I see everything. I see the song. I see it in a video. And I have to transcribe this video to audio for these musicians to convert. And, and he says, and it's in black and white, too, which I thought was very odd. But that's, that's Eric for you. That's super we, interesting. It is. He's a super interesting guy. Okay. You and I have talked about this before. We'll share it with the audience. There is a wonderful list of slang words for the, what the Brits call the mouth organ, um, that you call the harp ah. in America. And you and I, I think, both prefer the misery whistle, right? Misery whistle. It's the right. misery whistle. I'm not taking credit for it. Uh, the So when I was living up in D.C. and I was a student, um, there was a house uh, in Maryland where Pete Canaris lived, who was the guitarist for the Nighthawks for... 10 plus years and his roommates were Steve Potter who was the upright player for Big Joe and the Dynaflows. There was a, a gentleman named Toro Gamble who was a drummer and then there was Doug Jay. Doug Jay and the Blue Jays. Doug yeah. was Doug was Charlottesville All-Stars history. Um, you know, he was a D.C. you know, Maryland, Virginia legacy guy. Uh, was out on the West Coast and he taught me some harmonica and um, I remember... <laughs> sitting down with Pete who played with me for years and years and is one of my bestest friends. And, and he, uh, he's just like Johnny. He's like that damn misery whistle. <laughs> he goes, he goes, he, and then, and then the second time it came up, it was Chris Long from King Johnson. Uh, he used to say, you know, every once in a while I'll hear that, that horrible whistle from the back of the room during a show and I'll have to go find it and throw it across the room because they're never in the right key <laughs> when I'm playing. <laughs> well, you know, you, you mentioned Tad Robinson, who I'm a huge fan of, because you typically, one thing that, that you do that puts you in his category is your, your vocals, superb vocals, and the harp ability. Uh, he is, is one of those guys, and we can never get him down here. He's never booked to play down here. It's like once every two years, which is really annoying. But he says, I'm the only one that texts him a crazy picture on his birthday, and it just makes him laugh. So. But the, uh, the name uh, that comes up in England, more, I mean, there's other names that you all know here, the Gobby and the Mississippi Sax, uh, Reckless Tram, Hobo Harp. The ones that come up in England are, are often more interesting. The Tim Booty. Uh, that's a northern thing. Uh, the licking stick, the spit wagon, <laughs> the tone bone. And the tone the bone and the yeah. licking stick. I like it. Yeah. And the maniac's dummy. That is funny. Uh, I mean, you could also you could also call it, uh, you know, unemployed or, um, you know, need, I, I, I need food. Uh, give me, put 10 cents in my cup because all I have is the <laughs> licking stick. <laughs> Well, anyway, oh, to, get, to get your mouth involved, we don't need any other part of you, thank God, um, because you, you managed both of the, uh, the key things for the electromatics with, with just that. So on the harp and, and your singing um, is always, always a huge delight, and I'm, I'm very pleased that we've got you coming. What do you play, about 6 o'clock on the Monday? Yeah, or the yeah I, think, I think our set's somewhere around between 6 and 6.20-ish, um, 6.19 and 49 seconds to be exact. <laughs> and uh, and uh, we're excited. It's been a while since we were actually uh, have done the festival. I, you know, I was looking back. Uh, I was at, at my desk today and going through some things for the band, and uh, I pulled out the second annual 
uh, WRFG Darwin's Festival. CD oh my gosh! That, yeah, and, I mean, you know the the two CD the two CD set, and it's still shrink wrapped. And then I realized I had a whole box of those that Blackjack told me you're going to sell these. Don't worry, you're going to sell them all. <laughs> Well, that, that's a good point. I mean, because other than that black and white album, which was, what, 2018, um, do you yeah. have any merchandise to bring? So I, I'll be bringing that, that record with. Um, people can use it as coasters or actually play CDs if they still do that. Um, and um, everything else we've done previously has been, you know, short stints, short presses. So five, six songs. Um, and press and sell five six songs press and sell the idea is that we're going to be back in the studio in the fall and putting another record out with uh time with cody and dave yoke and an assorted cast of of local characters uh that'll be you know chock full of originals and and roots music so we'll Well, be coming with the yeah it's about bloody time it is you know, it, there's never enough time, but I'm ready. I'm ready. Yeah, well, we've we've both experienced how quickly that all flies by. So yeah, just grab it and get on with the next thing. But anyway, um, it's a very cool uh, day of great music, and uh, I, I hope that if you find any old uh, albums that even if they're used, you can still sell them. I tell you why, because the product is always a very worthy at a live event where people. They get caught up in what they're enjoying, and then they forget afterwards to go to a store or hop onto, God forbid, Amazon or somebody where they they don't buy from the band. Buy from the band, and then they get 100% of the revenue is one of my biggest things I try and impress upon people. But then you find some acts just don't bring the merch. So if you're short, here's what. we got time to order, print the G-strings. What do you think? I So here's you're going to get a bonus. <laughs> On Labor Day. Here's the bonus. I'm actually bringing my wife and my 11 year old and my six year old. My six year old is going to be selling merch, and she does know how to count change. So bring cash, <laughs> and she'll make change for you. And like I said, if you want, maybe we can even get her to sign it. We can get my son to sign it. It'll be a. It's a family affair. Now you've been out. I'm singing. It's in my head. Sly and Stone. Yeah, there we go. Now my brain's there gone down that other rabbit hole. Jay, John, uh, anybody that's uh, late to the party, we've had a, a tremendous chat with John Liebman of the Electromatics. They're the headline act for the Labor Day Blues Barbecue. Coming up very, very soon, a great day of music for not a lot of dollars. So uh, you will thoroughly enjoy what those guys put out. John, thanks so much for joining in and giving us the history and the names and for helping me pick on that as much as we humanly possibly can. Bob, always a pleasure. Always a pleasure. Look forward to seeing you. My thanks to John Liebman for joining us, telling us about 25 years of the Electromatics. I hope you can join us Monday at the Labor Day Blues Barbecue at the Park Tavern, our 39th. And those guys around 6 o'clock will deliver quite a performance for you to top off and be our headline act. So hope you get a chance to come and uh, witness and come say hello to me and all the other chaps that uh, handle Good Morning Blues here. Hi, this is Solomon Burke, and I'm riding the blues train on Radio Free Georgia. Soul sounds, rhythm and blues, everything you want to know about the news. It's on the soul train tonight, the blues train.